Hello again, good morning, I'm Maurice Barrett and I've got another Life in Lockdown for you. I'm still continuing with the end time studies uh, and I'm looking at the first resurrection. I'm still on it, this perhaps will be the last one. So whether you call it the catching up, the snatching up, the gathering together, the, the rapture, it doesn't matter what name we put to it, it's clear that there's going to be a resurrection, the first resurrection. And I'm going to look at some more scriptures that, that Paul states in clear language. I'm not looking at Revelation and Daniel. They can confirm the clear scriptures. But before I look at Thessalonians, uh, I've seen a lot of vlogs on Facebook lately that say, well, nothing needs to be fulfilled now till Jesus comes. Jesus could come any time because all the prophecies have been fulfilled. Well, I don't believe that's true. I'd like to dispute that. You know, without clear scripture to show there's a gap between our rising together in the first resurrection and Jesus coming and meeting us in the air, unless you've got clear scriptures that there's a gap of three and a half years or seven, if you're using, you know, prophecies and, and illustrations to support your, your theory, I've got to dismiss them at this time. So I'm just looking at clear scriptures. There may well be a gap, but I've not found any evidence in my studies. Let's look what Jesus says, Matthew 24, verse 23. Then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, so this is his second coming, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. So a false prophet showing great signs and wonders, surely we can say that's Revelation 13. That confirms Jesus' words. Uh, I'm not looking at that. The scripture because I'll probably do a, uh, a day on that, Revelation 12 and then Revelation 13. But I'll carry on. In so much that if it were so possible, they would deceive the very elect. Behold, I've told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say to you, Behold, is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, is in the secret chamber, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, you don't know where to look for the lightning. You look to the left and it starts in the right. You come to the right and it starts from the left. And it just flashes across the sky. It catches you out every time because you cannot anticipate where it will come from. It's a thief in the night. If you knew where to look, you'd prepare yourself. You wouldn't get caught out. So my whole message today is if you disagree with some of my explanations, that's all right. Don't miss the message that we could be caught out. And Jesus says it, as the lightning comes, it catches you out. I'm carrying on, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. And then he says this, immediately after the tribulation of those days. So Jesus said there's going to be tribulation before he comes again. The sun will be dark and the moon shall not give a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Well, those things haven't happened yet. These are things that have not happened on the earth, so Jesus cannot come any time. So those who come from heaven, it doesn't say they're, they're the ones that have died and, and risen in the first resurrection. It says to the armies of heaven, they're not people, they're angels. We'll see it later. So let me read from Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness did judge and make war. His eyes were as flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. We know that's Jesus. We've looked at that. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, fine linen, white and clean. They, they were armies of heaven. The armies of heaven are never the saints. He's coming with ten thousands of his saints. Even he not prophesied that. But that's because they meet him in the air. But he's leaving heaven with the armies of heaven. They're angels. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 So now I'm looking at Thessalonians. This is Paul. 
but have not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those that have died, that you sorrow not, even as those that which have no hope. So they might have died, but they won't miss the first resurrection if they're in Christ. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So we're going to meet them, they'll rise first and we'll meet them in the air, in the clouds. So those in the first resurrection will come to earth to reign with Christ at his coming. Verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So, us who are alive when Jesus comes won't stop those that have died in Christ because they'll arrive first and we'll meet them in the air. Well, somebody asked a question and it was a, a very good one. I'll tell you what he said. Is it possible that the first resurrection happened when some of the readers of Paul's letters were still alive? Because he said, we that are alive and remain. If it did not happen, that would make Paul a false teacher, as he told them that some of them would be raptured. So that's a good question. Paul said, we that are alive and remain. So he expected to be in the first rapture. Well, I'm sure he did, and I'm sure the Thessalonians were expecting Jesus to come, and we should also have the anticipation. But at the end of Paul's life, he knew that it wouldn't. He knew he would die in Rome. He actually said, you'll see me no more while you're weeping. He was going to Rome and he knew he would die. And he knew he wouldn't be in that first resurrection of those who are alive and remain. Of course, he would be in the dead that are asleep. So he knew he'd be in the resurrection. So I think it's like when the Queen says, we don't do this. She meant, I don't do it, it's the royal we. I think he's saying, those who are alive and remain at that time. That's the only explanation I can give to it. If it doesn't satisfy you, I'm sorry, but I can't believe that Paul was a false teacher. And obviously, I can't believe that the rapture happened in the days of Paul. So that's my explanation. Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the archangel, the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. That's the last trump, we've looked at that. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. The first to rise are not those that are alive and remain, but those who died in Christ. Though Then those who, who, so those who come with Christ can't come from heaven. That's the army, the angels of heaven. They can't come from heaven. But those that have died in Christ get the new spiritual bodies when the first resurrection happens. So when Jesus comes down, they rise first to meet him in the air. So they're not coming from heaven. They're not the armies of heaven. I hope you can understand that. So those who have died are the first to rise. And those who are alive are caught up and meet them. In the clouds, it says. That's interesting. It doesn't say meet him in the air or in heaven. The clouds are pretty low. You know, when I go in a plane 35,000, 50,000 feet above sea level, and we're flying above the clouds, I'm looking down on the clouds. So the clouds are not very high, are they? We can see the clouds. Maybe the whole world will see it. I don't know, but the clouds are not high. I just thought I'd mention that. Verse 17 and 18. Then we which are alive and remain, so those who are alive and remain, I think he's saying, are caught up together with them. So we're caught up together with them. We meet them in the air. They're not coming down from heaven. They've not been in heaven for 10, 20, 1,000 years. They're the armies of heaven who are coming down. The dead in Christ rise first and we meet them in the air. They, they're the first to rise. So, the resurrection, what, what's a resurrection? Well, a resurrection is just a person in flesh and blood who's died coming alive again in flesh and blood. This happened many times in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, Jairus' daughter, Lazarus, Jesus raised them, but they were raised in flesh and blood. Their spirit came back into their old body, flesh and blood. didn't matter that it was rotten, like Lazarus, he was stinking. It's a sign of the first resurrection. The life comes into it. But they were there in flesh and blood. And they died again. 
Nobody believes they had the immortal body. Lazarus and Jairus' daughter had the immortalized body. Jesus was the first one since Adam to have been flesh and blood and get the new spiritual immortal body. He's the first fruit and then Christ that is coming. So nobody has got that immortal body. I believe those who have died are asleep. They're not conscious in that sense. You can have experiences in your dreams when you're asleep, but they're not conscious. And the second after you wake up, it may have been 10 minutes you've been asleep or a 1,000 years. It's irrelevant because you enter eternity. It's the next minute. So that's another study entirely. And I've written about it in the Apostles Doctrine book. So if you want to know what I think about death and sleep, because the Bible talks so much about sleep. Daniel says, those that are asleep in the dust of the earth will rise again. So Jesus recognised death as sleep. So it's an interesting study. I recommend that you, you read what I've got to say before you make your opinion. So 1 Thessalonians 5.1 I'm looking at now. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need to write unto it, that I write to you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. That's the message. You don't have to agree with my explanations, but don't miss the message. You'll come like a thief in the night. Are you ready? For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come up upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. Well, how could Jesus come with not in times of peace and safety? The one world dictator has not brought world peace. We're in a time of pandemic. We're in a time of economic collapse. Um, not peace and safety. Verse 4, but you, brethren, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief catch you out. There it is again. You are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not children of the night, nor of the darkness. Work while it's day. The night's coming when no man can work. He's talking about spiritual day and night, not physical day and night. Therefore, let us not sleep. You get caught out. The thief comes in the night, as others do. But let us watch and be sober. Have you got Paul's message? He's saying, watch, pray. Don't be caught out. Don't be asleep when the thief comes. And the thief is Jesus. That's the analogy. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that are drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day, the spiritual day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God's not appointed us to wrath. Jesus is coming to judge, but he's not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that whether we wake, whether we're alive or we sleep dead, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as you do. And the last scripture, 2 Thessalonians 1, 4. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. So Paul expected persecutions and tribulations before Jesus comes and so should we. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Suffering is a requirement to reign with Christ. Seeing it's a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. So that confirms what I said, that the armies of heaven are the mighty angels. He comes, he'll be revealed with his mighty angels. So it's not the saints coming down who've been in heaven who are coming to reign. We meet him in the air, dead or alive. The armies of heaven are the angels. I'll read it again. Whom the Lord Jesus, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So the early church expected Jesus to come in their day. I accept that because many of the prophecies had been fulfilled, but many hadn't, but they didn't realise. It's like the first coming of Jesus. 
Many of the prophecies hadn't been fulfilled when Jesus came. Only part of them, part were for his second coming. They didn't see the man of sin revealed, as Paul told them. We had a type of it uh, in AD 70, but nobody brought fire down from heaven and got everyone to worship an image of the beast. So it's only part fulfilled in AD 70. It's it still got to happen, the fulfilment of it. Prophecy keeps getting fulfilled. So we've not seen many of the things that need to happen yet before he comes, but we have a warning so many times that when we think it will not happen, then it will happen. Jesus talked to his disciples, Matthew 24, 44, Be you also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. So the key is to be prepared to watch. Prepare yourself now to stand in an evil day. That's the warning of my message. Many will be caught out. Many will miss because they're not prepared. They're not ready. This pandemic that's happening now, many people don't realise it. They don't realise it's part of the plan to trap the whole world, to lock down the whole world. It's a prelude, a test to see if it will work. And many Christians fail the test because they think it's just to do with a pandemic and it's nothing to do with a pandemic. The figures don't confirm that it's a pandemic. It's a, a test to see if the one world government can lock the world down and they've realised they can. It's a test for the Christians, but most have failed it. But I'll talk about that after the lockdown has finished. I'm going to carry on with the series called After Lockdown and challenge you that 90% of Christians have missed the test. Anyway, time's gone. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow for another blog. I'm going to carry on with these end time studies. God bless you.